What's up everybody, Andile here and I am super excited for today's service. Before we get going, I want to ask you a question. Have you guys been doing your homework during lockdown? I know it's hard, I know it's difficult, you're always inside and it feels like it's going on all day long. But make sure that you do your homework and make your moms and dads really proud. I've got a theory when it comes to homework during lockdown. Can you really call it homework if you're always at home? Surely then it's just schoolwork or just work. What do you guys think? Anyway, today's service is going to be super exciting. We've got some actions coming your way and it's going to be amazing. Take a look at this.
Hey guys, so we are going to be doing things a bit differently. We're going to be starting with our memory verse. The reason why we're doing this is because today's memory verse ties in with the whole morning and it's important that we know that from the beginning. So we're going to be learning our memory verse and today's memory verse comes from Colossians 3 verse 23 and it says, Whatever you do, work heartily to the Lord and not for men. Okay, so there are some actions, but I'm going to do a bit more explaining and then we'll get into the actions later. And the memory verse says, in whatever you are doing. Now, when I say whatever, it literally means whatever you are doing. Some of you guys might be thinking, even when I'm brushing my teeth, yes, even when you're brushing your teeth. Some of you guys might be thinking, even when I'm washing the dishes, yes, even when you're washing the dishes. Some of you guys might be thinking, surely not when I'm doing my schoolwork. Even when you are doing your schoolwork, or doing whatever it is that you are doing we can do it for god and not for men now some of you guys might be thinking well how do wait how, how do i brush my teeth for god how how do i eat or drink for god how do i do my schoolwork for god and the thing that the bible is talking about is god is more interested in the attitude of our hearts about when we're doing it instead of what we're doing most of the time it's the attitude of our hearts whether we doing it for the right reasons, whether we're doing it to please God or if we're doing it to please men. With whatever we do, we should always be doing it to please God. Now, I told you guys there's some actions to this. I'm gonna ask everyone to stand up real quick. It's a short memory verse. There's a few actions and we're gonna be going. So if everyone's up, we find this in Colossians and then we're gonna go three, verse 23. That's just to get it out there so you know where it is. And then it says, in whatever so you guys are going to go whatever you do so you're going to go whatever and you're going to go you do work heartily okay so work pull your muscles because it's a lot of hard work whatever you do work heartily for the lord you can point up and not for men because we don't want to be impressing men so we can do this again okay one two three with whatever you do work heartily to the lord and not for men. Colossians 3 verse 23. Hey guys, so this morning's object lesson is going to be on flowers and we're going to make flowers grow and bloom. Okay, so all you're going to need is a Tupperware, any shape, any size, right? You're going to fill the Tupperware up with water about halfway. 
Okay, and then I've added some food coloring to the water just to make it look a little more fancy so we can see the flowers in the water, right? And then lastly, you're going to design your own flowers. Okay, so what I've done is I've made them exactly the same. You can make them like this. You can make them bigger or smaller, however you want. And once you've done that, you're going to cut them out and you're going to start folding them. Okay, so this is how it works. You're going to fold each petal inwards towards the center, nice and slowly, so that we're covering up all the color, all the pretty colors that you've put on, okay? And by the time you've finished, it's just gonna look like a white little blob, okay? And this is basically describing us, right? This is like us, when we do things for ourselves and not for God, right? It doesn't look that pretty, and no one can see that Jesus is inside of us, right? and we do things with a bad attitude or we do things for our own selfish reasons, we don't live a life that truly reflects the beauty of God. But when we do everything as though we're doing it unto God, which in actual fact we are, everything becomes so much more prettier and the true beauty of God shines through us to those around us. And everything actually becomes that much easier because it makes sense to give God our absolute best. Right, and so you can try this at home, you can try it as many times as you would like. Um, and while the flowers are opening, I want you to think about things you can do every day that can be done unto God. Okay, so now we're going to hear about an incredible story in the Bible where it shows us an example of this. Alrighty, so we are going to be looking at our main guy for the past few weeks. Paul, and we have learned a lot about Paul. We first learned how his life was completely changed when he met Jesus, how he went from the guy killing Christians to the guy who was then preaching to people to become Christians. We also learned how Paul really valued friendship and why that's so important. And today we're learning more about Paul and the fact that everything Paul did was as though he was doing it for God. And that's what we've been learning today, that everything we do should be unto God. Now, when we're doing the fun things in life, that's quite easy to have fun and give God the glory while life is going well. But Paul really shows us that even in the hardest, most difficult times, we still need to do everything with the right heart attitude as if we're doing it for God himself, because technically speaking, we are. So, I'm gonna need your help for our story today. So I need you all to stand on your feet there you go, you're up, you're up. Make sure everyone's standing, no one's sleeping. And you guys are all going to be the main guy in our story today. Paul, look at yourself and say, I'm Paul. How you doing, Paul? Cool, you ready to be Paul today? Because Paul's story is hectic and we're going to go on a journey with Paul to see all that Paul endured while all the time still doing everything with the good attitude unto God because he knew that that's what counted. So. Paul's mission was far from boring. He endured many hiccups and hardships along the way. Now the first, one of the first things that happened to Paul is Paul was very often chased out of cities for preaching the gospel. But now it wouldn't have just been a, can you please leave Paul? He would have been chased with like rocks and being beaten. It was hectic. So I want to see you, okay, sprinting on the spot as fast as you can as you're running out of the city. You gotta sprint. Are you, are you sweating? Are you sprinting? Check out your sister, your brother. Are they sprinting? Good. Okay, so Paul was chased out of the cities many, many times. Okay, now also, Paul was thrown into prison. Now that is hectic, but I don't know how you keep a good attitude in prison, but Paul did. So I want you to imagine how you would feel being in prison. Can you like maybe sit down, like hunched over, cold? Bit? Let me see it. Down on the floor, there you go, cold. Tummy's grumbling, what sound would that make? Like a grr, 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 grr. My son makes loud sounds when I'm hungry. Like I actually get a bit embarrassed. You know, like in a school exam or a school test and everything's quiet and you're hungry and your stomach's grumbling. I mean, you're like, it's not me. It happens to you. Don't be quiet, it's true. Okay, so you're in prison, Paul's in prison and it's, it's cold, he's hungry. And you know, it's rough in there, all right? But Paul has a good heart attitude, okay? Now, do you know what else happened to Paul? Paul was beaten and not just once. Not just twice, but he was beaten many times. In fact, one time he was beaten so badly, they thought he was dead and just dragged him out the city. But guess what Paul does? He gets back up and keeps preaching. This guy's crazy. Alrighty, so I need you guys to get on your best acting skills. I need you to pretend that you're blocking some like 
Blah, fist CIK, can you guys show me what you got? Okay, go out there, go. Show me how you would defend some fist flying. You're not fighting back, you're poor, remember? You're just defending yourself. Let me see you go. Okay, can be a ninja. I mean, I'm not sure how to defend fights. I don't usually get into fights, so I'd stay away from them. But show me how you would do it. You ready? Okay, go. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Okay, now I need you to dramatically fall to the ground like that. Okay, who can do it? Who can do it? Good, you guys are great at this. Okay, so Paul is beaten. I mean, I know we're having fun now, but that couldn't have been fun in the moment. Now hear this. Paul was even bitten by snakes. I'm not sure about you, but I honestly hate snakes with everything in me and I am terrified. I live on a farm and I often hear those snakes around and I literally freak out and pray to God they won't come in my house. But he was bitten by snakes and lots of them. All right, so I need you to make a little slithering sound like a snake, like a You did it? There you go. Okay, bitten by snakes. All right, last thing in part of his journey, he was shipwrecked, okay? And I mean, this is crazy. I mean, shipwrecks don't happen in calm waters. They happen when there's storms and raging waves and it's crazy. And so I want you to imagine that you're drowning. You're trying to swim out of the waves and you're struggling. Are you struggling? Are you struggling? Are you drowning? Are you swimming? Let me see you go. And you're going and you're going there. You, you guys are good at this. You guys are, you guys are great out there. Whew, okay. So we're going to do this double speed. We're going to recap. So I'm going to give you one word and you have to do the action for it, all right? So I'm going to say chase and all you have to do is sprint, right? When I say prison, I want you to be hunched over, okay? When I say beaten, I want you to be like, ah, okay? When I say snake, you're going to slither. And when I say shipwreck, you're going to drown. Ooh. Okay, are you ready? This is your time to shine, Paul. Focus, game face on. All right, chased. Sprint. Got it? Okay, prison. Your hands do it. Beaten. Ah. Snake. Slither. Shipwreck. Okay, so that was your practice and I helped you. This time around, I'm not helping you and I want to see how fast you can do it. Are you ready? Okay, deep breaths in. In three, two, one. Chased. Prison. Beaten. Snake and shipwrecked. Woo! I feel like you guys need to have a big glass of juice after this. But guys, the most incredible thing about Paul's entire journey is that absolutely everything he did was as though he was doing it unto God. So no matter what he went through, the good things, all the bad things, and there were also good things along his journey. But there certainly were a lot of bad things, but everything that he went through, he knew it was worth it. And he knew that the biggest thing that mattered was the attitude of his heart. And if that was in the right place, he knew that God would be pleased with him, that God wasn't concerned about what he was doing. God was concerned about his heart attitude. He wasn't trying to be a hero. He wasn't trying to impress people. He was doing everything unto God. And so that's a huge lesson for us. Are we doing things to impress people or to look good or for approval, affirmation, or whatever it might be? Or are we doing things heartily with everything in us unto God and God alone? Because that's whose approval truly, truly matters. So my challenge to you is throughout this week is no matter what situation you're in, think to yourself, am I doing this for me, for selfish reasons, or because I want to look good or I want to you know, look impressive or am I doing this unto God in the good things and the bad things that everything we do is unto God. There you have it. Lots we can learn from Paul. Hey everyone, we're going to slow things right down and really take some time to reflect and think about what we've just heard. Maybe you have areas in your life where you struggle to do them as if you're doing them for God. Maybe for you, it's doing the chores. You really find that really hard. Or maybe it's doing your homework. It's really difficult, it's really hard, and you always complain. Or maybe it's sharing your toys or sharing things with your siblings. You really find that difficult. Whatever it is, make sure that in this next song, you take those things before God and ask Him to help you with them. Ask Him to give you the kindness, to give you the strength, and to give you the right attitude so that when you do those things day to day, those things that are really difficult, those things that are hard, ask Him to remind you and remind me that whatever we do, we should always remember that we should do everything 
as if we're doing it for Him. Let's worship. time of worship. Maybe this morning you've been watching today's service and you really want to give your life to Jesus. We want to say that is an amazing thing and is the greatest decision that you will ever make. If you want to make that decision today and put your life in Jesus' hands and ask Him to come into your heart and come into your life and be your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to repeat these words after me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, today I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for dying for my sins and taking that punishment for me. Today I believe in you and I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I want to be like you. Teach me to be like Jesus. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, if you made that decision, we are so excited. And this is the greatest decision that you will ever make. Over to Tash.
Amen. Well, guys, we have almost come to the end of our service for today. Just a few quick reminders of an object lesson. Make your flowers, see them bloom in the water. That was really fun. Try that one out. You're going to love it. I promise that memory verse again, go over it so it's in your head, in your heart, and you're living it out. All right. And don't forget to WhatsApp us your videos and your messages. We are loving hearing from you so, so much. And so on that note, let's take a look at what you guys have been getting up to and you can see what your friends around the world are doing at the same time as you guys. Here it goes. Hi Tash, we love the video. And we did um, the video on the top of the hill. And finally, we have got our slide this week of our discussion points. So get your families together, have a good chat, pray together, and really talk practically how you can implement these things into your daily lives. I mean, we don't want to just hear God's word. And you know, like we learned a few weeks ago, in the one ear, out the other. We want these things to soak in our hearts that they actually change us. If we're listening to God's word every week and reading devotionals every day, but we're not changing, we're actually wasting our time. And so we need to pray for God's help that these things that we're learning will soak so deep in our hearts that they become a part of us that we can't help but live these things out. And that is our challenge for you. So enjoy your discussion and we will see you guys next week.